Welcome to this full flight tutorial for the PMD G737 in MSFS. Before we fly, a very important note about flight planning in this plane. Although flight plans created in the sims built in flight planner don't automatically feed through to the aircraft, you should still use it before your flight to identify suitable departure and arrival runways. You should also note the ICAO codes of your departure and arrival airports from the planner. This tutorial is from a runway start with engines running. A cold and dark startup tutorial will follow at a later date. I recommend you watch this video before flying the plane and that you pause along the way to take notes. Then when you do fly, use those notes to guide you. With that said, let's jump inside. The aircraft's instrument layout is in its default configuration, so it'll be easy to follow along if you've just installed the plane. First, we'll head down to VFMC and head to Route. We enter the departure and destination airports on this screen. We're going from Stansted to Glasgow for this tutorial flight. We'll then press Departures Arrivals, press our Departure Airport, followed by our Departure Runway, which is the one we're currently on. We'll go to Departures Arrivals again, pick our Arrival Runway, then press root activate exec to commit this. Clicking next page will view our route. We won't go into the complexities of route planning here. It's just a simple direct flight between two runways. If you see route discontinuity, press the soft key next to the first waypoint, click the soft key in the top right and press exec. The plane will now fly direct to our first waypoint. We then press in at ref and head over to our perf page. First we need to find our gross weight, which can be found in the sim's fuel pop-up menu. As you can see, this is our current total weight. We then enter this as our gross weight for departure. We'll set fuel reserves to a nominal value of 1 for this simple flight where we've loaded a rough percentage of fuel in the sim. We'll set cruising altitude about 26,000 for a short flight and 37,000 on a longer one. We'll now set the cost index, we've set 100, which will give us full power. We'll also set transition altitude, 5,000 feet in the UK and 18,000 in the US. We'll commit these changes by pressing the exec key. On the M1 limit page, we'll configure our thrust rating. SEL can usually be populated with a value of 40 in temperate climates. Think of it like a flex temperature in an Airbus. On the takeoff page, We'll set flaps 5 for takeoff. We'll populate the CG by clicking on the soft key next to it, and we'll press the soft keys on the right hand side to populate our V speeds. Note the V2 speed, we'll need this soon. With the FMC configured, we can now head up to the main panel, start setting up our autopilot. On the MCP, our first task is to make sure the flight directors on left and right side are switched on. We'll set our desired altitude to our cruising altitude. And once that's set, we'll activate VNAV by clicking the VNAV button on the MCP. In the 737, VNAV mode will automate our climb and descent. We'll also set our initial speed to our V2 speed, which is 128. We'll now dial in the course of our destination runway on both sides of the MCP. You can find the course and ILS frequency of your destination runway at apxp.info. With the courses dialed in, we'll set the ILS frequency of our destination runway as our active nav frequency on both nav radios. Configuring this on both sides will set us up for an auto land or a semi-automatic landing where available. We'll also set our transponder mode to TARA. Heading back up to the main panel, we'll set radio minimums for landing of 150 feet. We'll also hit the B hotkey to make sure our local altimeter is set correctly. We can also zoom out our navigation display a little bit here as well, to give us a clearer view of the route ahead. Heading down to the pedestal, we'll check our takeoff trim on the FMC, and then set the takeoff trim on the trim wheel on the pedestal. Also check that flaps are set correctly for takeoff. If they're not, use your flap keys on your joystick to adjust them. 
Also set spoilers to armed, making sure the lever is in the armed detent. On the overhead panel, lights, window and probe heat should already be set correctly from a runway start, but if you need or want to adjust them, the controls can be found on the overhead panel. You can also set anti-ice, depending on the conditions. We'll dial in our cruising altitude in the cabin pressure controls as well. We're almost ready to go. We'll make sure auto brake is set to RTO on the main panel. And we can release the parking brake. You can either use a hotkey or the physical switch on the pedestal. We're now ready to go, so let's strustle up and start the flight. At the rotate callout, we bring the nose back and raise the gear once we have a positive rate of climb. Initially, you should manually follow the flight director displayed on the PFD. At 400 feet above ground, we can activate autopilot and LNAV. The plane will start to follow your flight plan and settle into a climb. If you have a more complex flight plan, expect the plane to occasionally level out to obey altitude constraints during the climb. It will resume the climb automatically once those constraints are cleared. As we reach flap zero speed, as shown by the markers on the PFD, you can retract the flaps during climb. Above transition altitude, set the altimeter to standard. The plane will stay at 250 knots below 10,000 feet and it will accelerate as soon as we pass through this altitude. During climb, you'll notice the FMC enters progress mode. You can check the time remaining until top of climb on this screen. At top of climb, which is indicated by a marker on the navigation display, the plane will level off and settle into a cruise. Once we reach our cruise altitude, we've got a few bits to configure in preparation for our descent. We'll check the legs page in the FMC, which will tell us our final descent altitude, which is 2,400 feet above ground level. We'll dial this in to the MCP as our desired altitude, and the plane will start to descend to it at top of descent. We'll also complete our approach ref on the FMC where we tell the plane which flap setting and approach speed we'd like. On the main panel we'll also set our auto brake to max in preparation for our landing. With all of that done we can return our FMC to our progress page and track our flight and our time till top of descent. At top of descent, the plane will automatically begin to descend to its final altitude and it will obey speed and altitude constraints along the way. As we approach 10,000 feet, the plane will slow down to 250 knots. This tends to happen fairly close to the deceleration point on the flight plan, so once the plane has reached 250 knots, it will continue to decelerate to approach speed. Reference speeds for flaps are displayed just below the landing gear lever. Apply flaps as the plane passes through these speeds. At the end of its deceleration, the plane will be at approach speed and the flaps will be full, or set to the configuration that you chose in approach ref. Once we reach approach speed, we'll be fairly close to the airport, so we'll drop our landing gear. At transition altitude, we set the altimeter back to local pressure. And as we reach bottom of descent, the plane will level off. As we pass through the intercept waypoint on our flight plan, hit VOR localizer on the MCP and the plane will seek the localizer for the runway. Once the localizer enunciator appears on the PFD, the plane will turn towards the runway. At this point, hit approach on the MCP and the plane will descend on the glide slope once it reaches the correct point. When the glide slope enunciator appears on the PFD and the plane starts to descend on the glide slope, you can head up to the MCP and arm autopilot 2 for a semi-automatic or automated landing, depending on conditions and the runway. Approaching minimums. 200. 
Depending on conditions, the plane should make a fairly gentle shallow approach to the runway. As it gets to the point where it's over the runway, it will back off the throttles and flare for what's hopefully a fairly smooth touchdown. You can of course take over a couple of hundred feet above the ground and land the plane manually. Upon touchdown, apply reverse thrust. Auto brake will slow the aircraft down. Make sure you hold the center line. You can set throttles back to idle at around 80 knots and retract flaps and spoilers as desired. In this tutorial, we're coming to a full stop on the runway, but in a real flight, you'd likely taxi off the runway during rollout. We've now successfully completed a full flight in the PMDG 737. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. If you'd like to know more in depth about the plane or the systems, the developers themselves have put together some really detailed tutorials focusing on specific parts of the plane, which I recommend you check out. Thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.